Boom. All right, what's up, you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about the price action that we're currently seeing across the crypto markets in the wake of all of this geopolitical uncertainty. All right, so we'll take a look at the two big dogs on the chart today, kicking it off with Bitcoin and then moving on to Ethereum. Talk some technicals, talk some price action, and I'll also let you guys know both the bullish and bearish scenarios that I see playing out for both BTC and ETH. All right, but before we get into the charts, we of course have to cover some of the fundamentals at play because the macroeconomics will obviously directly affect the crypto markets okay so as you all know russia has invaded ukraine all right very very bad news a lot going on right now not going to dive into the specifics of that there's plenty of other articles you can go read plenty of other videos you can watch of more competent people to speak on the subject than myself but i do want to tie in some cryptocurrency news relevant to the topic or related to the topic at hand uh just to tie it into this crypto focus video okay so crypto decoded 4.1 million dollars in cryptocurrency funneled to ukrainian military since russia invaded we're not going to go over the whole article just wanted read you guys a few key points give you guys my two cents maybe one cent and then dive into the charts and just focus on price action also got coin mark cap right here as well to take a look at 24 hour and seven day but key points donations being funneled to the ukrainian army and cryptocurrencies like bitcoin are in the millions of dollars which is amazing according to new data from blockchain analytics firm elliptic research shows that 4.1 mil in crypto has been raised for the military since the invasion began including a single three million dollar donation early friday so it's like 75% of this 4 point million was from one donor. I wonder if that was like an exchange or something. Let me know in the comments down below who you think the $3 million is. A $3 million donor is. Is it Elon? Is it Mr. Musk? Is it Papa Musk? Is it Kanye? Is it Brian Armstrong of Coinbase? Is it, is it, is it, is it CZ of Binance? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below just for fun who you guys think that is. But love to see this, you guys. Uh, this is one of the great use cases of crypto. What's going on right now? Another somewhat worrisome use case for crypto is that damn it it just disappeared but there was a breaking news how germany and a lot of uh, obviously along with the u.s uh, along with the, uh, germany other european countries along with the u.s has banned russia from the swift network which is pretty much the payment rails the digital payment rails that route all the major banks across like globally okay all the major banks in the world operate pretty much on the swift network you you send an international wire transfer that is done through swift okay so they're cutting off the flow of fiat currencies to russia very very good now where that gets a little dicey is but but also it's both an argument in both directions from I guess from a moral perspective is, is the negative side of this. But from a use case perspective and from an efficacy perspective, this is obviously a great use case for crypto because now that Swift and fiat payment rails are, are cut off to Russia, now you can just open up your Coinbase wallet. Obviously not just Coinbase, it's going to be a lot of other third party, fourth party wallets and dark wallets. But there are ways that you can fund that Russia can stay funded via crypto okay and that's the beauty that's both the beauty and uh, harsh reality of crypto but hey that's that's kind of what crypto is all about right it is the freedom of wealth transfer and that's why it's beautiful but again from a moral perspective it can definitely be argued just wanted to give you guys my two cents there so stay tuned for what happens with that it's going to be very interesting to see how again the the, the cutting of swift uh will affect the crypto prices and how it affect obviously more more so than that the investor sentiment and demand around crypto from from an investment perspective okay whether this shines a positive or negative light on cryptocurrency overall okay but again from a use case from an efficacy perspective pretty cool okay so bitcoin and ether we'll just take a look at both of these right now on the 24 hour seven day bitcoin currently sitting just above thirty nine thousand dollars at the time of recording it is saturday um gonna be a crazy week you guys stay tuned uh so bitcoin sitting at 39,000, up about a percent in the past 24 up just two percent in the past seven days so roughly virtually flat on the week same as ether ether outperforming a lot of the market right now so ether up two percent in the past seven days still flat in the past 24 hours so it is nice to see ether really holding the line which is honestly kind of surprising you think that bitcoin being a traditional Chaos, definitely more of a chaos hedge than ether more of a store of value more of an inflation hedge would be uh, performing a little stronger than ETH at this point in time but ethereum hey 
Ethereum is really, really big at the come up right now. It's crazy that Ether is almost half the market cap of Bitcoin right now. But hey, again, Ether is the oil of Web3, so it kind of does make sense. Ether is literally, you pay gas fees, Ether is gas. Ether is energy, fuel, okay? So, uh, again, you guys, crypto markets roughly flat, obviously, uh, on Wednesday when the news of the Russia uh, Russia invasion was officially announced. We saw the big sell-off immediately eaten back up by buy orders. Um, from a sentiment perspective, that is bullish. If you guys bought the dip, a little plug, give the video a like if you guys bought the dip. Congrats to you, first of all. Cheers to that. But give the video a like if you guys were able to buy, uh, buy that dip. If you guys are buying the dip right now. Give the video a like. Hey, if you're waiting, give the video a like. So, either way, like the video. Really means a lot of you guys. Subscribe to the channel to stay tuned. Exciting times on the horizon. So, uh, just subscribe to the channel. Very exciting to make content around times like this, around times of a lot of macro, because I do personally enjoy talking macro and studying macro for myself. So, join the wave, Sam. Help your boy get to 50K subs. Don't think we'll ever make it, but that's all right. Uh, you guys are real ones, all right? Quality over quantity. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate the Waves fam. And of course, if you want to know how I'm trading not only cryptos, but crypto equities, the entire market, growth sectors, growth equities, my favorite hyper growth revolutionary names, as I do think they're going to start to make comebacks over the coming weeks. Complete portfolio, daily newsletter, along with a complete breakdown of my entire portfolio, which I do update every trading day during market hours. I also send out a complimentary newsletter directly to your email inbox, explaining my thoughts and rationalizing my trades trying to teach you guys uh, to the best of my ability, the principles of trading and, and why I'm trading the way I'm trading. And you also get the private links to the exclusive videos that I make throughout the week. Okay, so uh, 15 bucks a month, $40 for every three months. I'm biased. I feel it's extremely worth it. Do my best truly to make that worth your guys hard earned money. So it means a lot if you guys check that out. First link down below in the description box, the link to join the exclusive waves discord channel great freaking best community in the game baby uh that link is also down below as well 10 bucks a month for that puppy uh and again means a lot of you guys check that out uh keeps keeps everything moving keeps everything flowing uh so i appreciate that but if not no worries at all let's get in to this ta all right so we'll start with the bull case just because i know you guys i know most of you are bullish and that's all right you guys know i'm still a little hesitant on whether this is an actual reversal or whether this is a bear trap or a bull trap i'm sorry uh, still leaning a little bit towards bull trap, given everything else. Again, the Fed coming in, raising rates, uh, the economy just objectively slowing down based on a lot of earnings forecasts and metrics. But hey, you know what? This is freaking crypto. The markets are more rational than they've ever been. So who knows what's going to happen? I'm just going to give you guys my, again, just my two cents, one cent because this market's so irrational. All right. So the bull case, Bitcoin, the, we'll go to the daily candles because the daily, the daily stochastic RSI is pointing bullish right now so you can see the daily stokes this blue and red line right here on the bottom of the screen you can see these are curling to the upside now this curl up is a little is not super impressive it looks similar to this one we saw back here and actually over here as well so it's a it's it's not really curling up it's kind of just at on on a on an incline on a healthy incline to the upside so do i think bitcoin will see a rapid move up I don't think it's very likely, but do I think it's possible that we climb similar to this, go from, uh, I mean, a big sell-off right here, immediately eating back up and slowly climb up maybe 5%, 10%. I do think that's possible, okay? What is the most bullish scenario, though? Because that's more fun to talk about, okay? Both price targets I have right now are set for March 2nd. All right, let's go back to the four hour. And same as Ether, you guys. So we're talking the next four or five days out. If you guys are watching this later than that, let me know if I'm wrong or right. So we'll see. All right. Uh, the reason I have this trend line here, and I do think Bitcoin, the best case scenario for Bitcoin is about 45.5 over the next four or five days, is because this is a previous line of support on this nice uptrend right here um, that will likely be used as new resistance. Okay, previous support becomes a new resistance, TA 101. All right. So if that happens again, March 2nd, if this trend line previous line of support is tested as new resistance on March 2nd, which also falls into a channel, uh, I, all these levels here, you guys are just general lever levels that have acted as historical ceilings and floors for Bitcoin. That's why I have them drawn here. Uh, it would make sense because that also falls onto the top side of this level right here around 45.5. Now, do I think it's likely that we go higher than that? Given the macroeconomic backdrop, given again, all of the fundamental headwinds, that I've been talking about for the past few weeks that are still that there's no reason they're not at play anymore. So they are still at play. I do 
not think it's very likely at all that Bitcoin sees higher than 45,000. If it does, I do think we'll trade in a range probably from 40 to 45K for quite a while prior to the next bull run, which who knows what will happen. But I do think it'll be, it won't take three years like the last time. Um, but anyway, 45K in my mind is the best case scenario over the next week. Uh, possible to see it? Absolutely. Likely? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say no or yes just because I'm, I really have no... Right now, I, I really am not confident enough to give any any absolute answer. But I do lean, as I just said, a little bit more to the downside. Probably 55, 55, I mean 55, 45, 60, 40 uh, bear bull. Okay? At least that's my take. Okay? So uh, that is the bullish scenario. Let's talk about the bearish scenario. Then we'll hop into ETH and do the exact same thing. And uh, not, I'm, I'm straight up just going to talk technicals in that one because all of the same principles that I just explained for Bitcoin and bullish bear sentiment applies to ETH as well, okay? Aside from the fact that ETH is doing a little better. So we'll see if ETH can kind of carry the markets right now. Um, anyway, Bitcoin bearish scenario, there are a lot of trend lines that intersect at $29,000 on March 2nd. If you guys saw my video saying Bitcoin will be sub $30,000 uh, by March, March 1st, whatever, this does fall in line with that, okay? So the reason for this, downtrend bitcoin obvious downtrend prior to that that breakout that crazy eat uh the crazy just eat <laughs> the crazy eat of sell orders by buy orders there we go that's kind of what i was looking for but anyway previous again previous resistance previous support these trend lines do come into play and this previous support and previous resistance on this descending channel intersect perfectly on march 2nd along with this very 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 significant line of resistance that i do think still has to be tested as new support at least once prior to going sideways and ripping to the upside again new bull market of the overall downtrend so bitcoin all the way back in november you can see here right November all time high 68 not $69,000 $69,000 touch point touch point touch point touch point multiple touch points once Bitcoin broke that resistance that very significant resistance that's when we saw that rip to the upside from like 38,000 to 45 uh, 45 5 45 7 okay so very significant resistance has not yet been tested as new support and uh, also this this comes perfectly in line with these short-term uh trend lines as well down to twenty nine thousand dollars on march 2nd at the same time let's zoom out here a little bit as retesting this previous high over here the low we saw back uh back in summer of 2021 around twenty eight thousand dollars so i think personally i think it's oh, what the heck i think it's more likely than not that we do come down retest twenty eight thousand dollars one more time if you've played these markets before which I personally have I'm fortunate to have played a few of these markets. The correction that we've just seen, especially given the macroeconomic backdrop, just doesn't seem enough yet. There's so much retail hysteria, so much retail mania. This is just not enough. Both my both my mind and my gut tell me that. So I do favor the downside still. Uh, is it possible we see upside? Again, the markets are more irrational than ever. Coinbase crushed earnings, but still fell when the, even the rest of the market succeeded. So if that happens, then I don't even know what investors are thinking. So therefore, I'm sticking to my guns, sticking to what I believe is the most rational and logical uh, assumption, given the data that I have available to me. And I'm going to say that downside is still slightly more in the favor okay so let's that said that is the king let's talk eth and close out the video so eth also daily stokes curling to the upside good for medium to slightly longer term price action let's talk four hours okay four hours also really really overbought right now so i do think we will see a short-term pull to uh, short-term correction of the downside where do i think we go in the case that we do see a short-term correction i think it's pretty damn likely we actually come down to retest this previous line a very very significant resistance as new support which the ether has been dancing around so let's let's zoom out a little bit just to show you guys this very significant channel similar to bitcoins right here very very significant descending channel ether has jumped above it and below it a few times currently sitting above it but this 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 line this trend line overall is definitely still in play and uh, this is kind of an ascending a descending channel a shorter term descending channel layered right on top of that long term descending channel okay so right now just considering uh, in the past 48 hours or so we've seen such crazy upside i do think some short-term downside is in order if we do see a correction i would be surprised at all to see us come down to about 2600 dollars in the short term maybe even as low as february 27 february 26 27 to the next day or two coming down to about 2600 dollars to retest again this just very significant trend line that's in play also setting kind of a kind of a higher low on this uh on the short-term uptrend if we do see the short-term 
like reversal actually playing itself out. So low, high, higher low, probably going to a higher high if we do see more upside, if we do bounce back up. But I do think short term, we will see a correction given the four hour stokes do look like they want to curl to the downside. So, and tomorrow's Sunday, so it's just going to be slower. So I do think we'll see that. Um, and, and what happens from there is pretty important. Okay. So in the case that ether breaks back below this trend line, I will say if ether breaks 2,500, I, I can say confidently that if ether does see 2,500 again, I will be uh, pretty convinced that more downside is ahead. And uh, although the baseline of support on this very, very stark descending channel would bring us to about $1,300 on March 2nd, which is an absolute worst case scenario. Do I think they, do I think we'll see that? I don't because Ether, once again, is just too powerful of an asset and too recognized by so many so many uh, powerful players within the global financial systems. Same as Bitcoin. I don't think Bitcoin's going to see $20,000 again. I don't think Ether will see $1,300, $1,400, which was its 2017 high. But I do think Ether can see $1,800, and I do think that's the worst case scenario for Ether. So uh, will Ether fall to $1,800 in the next four days? I don't think it's likely. But do I think that by March 2nd, we can kind of see a slow climb down again? Ether is demonstrating more strength as an asset over over just the past few days than Bitcoin. So it will be interesting to see if Ether does break below this, if it does break back into this channel, break again below $2,500, flip bearish. But wouldn't be surprised if we just see kind of a slow climb down here. Again, uncertainty, not uh, not necessarily bearishness, but just uncertainty, which causes uh, kind of a subtle sell-off down to about $2,500, maybe some sideways price action, and then ripping back to the upside. Uh, bullish scenario is similar to Bitcoin retesting this previous line of support as new resistance on this shorter-term uptrend that was broken uh, in the middle of this month, February 16th, right there, and then followed by a massive sell-off. So you know this trend line is in play. So Again, previous uh, resistance, new support, that would take us up March 2nd to $3,400 or resulting in because that's a pretty stark jump to the upside or uh, representing about a 25% move up. Okay, so uh, again, not going to make any direct assumptions right now uh, before before this this crazy again trigger happy uh, buying spree happened on, on Wednesday after the big sell off. Uh, before that, I was a lot more bearish than I am right now. But if if there's people who are buying and it's still holding, holding this line, holding the sideways line, um, man, might have to flip bullish. So we'll see what happens, you guys. Again, subscribe to the channel, uh, subscribe to the newsletter as well to get day to day updates on some of these on some of our favorite names here. Um, and uh, yeah, just let me know what you guys think about the climate below. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? And why? Okay, so I'll see you guys downstairs, and I'll see you next time. Until then, always remember take action, make waves. Peace.